This video is one of a trio that provide quick reviews of the Escape the Dark Castle adventure packs and that supplement our main review of the game. We hope that together these videos form a useful buyer's guide for Escape the Dark Castle whether you are starting or expanding your experience of the game. Unless otherwise stated, any views I expressed in the main review remain relevant with the expansions in play. Links to the other videos in the series are included in the video description. Thanks for watching. If you've already watched our review of the previous two adventure packs, you'll have some of the basic benefits of this expansion already established. As with its siblings, you can add AP3 into your games without any of the other adventure packs if you'd rather start your game expansions here. Although a core box is required to use the adventure packs, you can play through the 15 chapter cards and boss card included as a separate all new playthrough, or alternatively, and this is certainly my preference, shuffle them into the chapter cards from the core game to give yourself a wider range of chapters when you assemble your random chapter deck. Given that one of my criticisms of the core set was that the number of chapter cards included made it statistically likely you'd encounter the same chapter cards repeatedly over multiple playthroughs, it would be no surprise that I feel these additional chapters add much needed replayability to the core game. By the time you've bought all three adventure packs should you choose to do so, you will have doubled the chapters in the original game. However, as all the adventure packs include the same number of additional chapters, it is the other components included that differentiate them from each other. The emergent mechanic for this expansion is, somewhat unsurprisingly, Plague, a new condition which players must tally as the game progresses. If a character takes damage from a plague carrier, which like the cult in the first adventure pack is denoted by a new symbol on relevant chapter cards, they will take a point of plague and themselves become a carrier if they are not already. Each time they reach a new threshold of 5 plague, so 5, 10, 15 and so forth, they immediately take a penalty in the form of lost health points. Similar to the curse mechanic from the first adventure pack, you must now choose who will draw each item, as four plague cards are now incorporated into the item deck and will require the drawing player to roll a plague die in order to see how much plague they accumulate instead of an item. There are likewise other events within the new components that will cause you to roll this die. Even collecting items from a dead carrier or trading an item from a character that has been infected will result in the plague being spread. The new chapter cards often include little extra pustules of terror to deal with based on your current status with regards to plague. Perhaps you'll find an opportunity to heal plague, or alternatively encounter an enemy that focuses on you personally as the character with the least plague. These touches really embed the new plague concept into the existing game rather than it feeling like something that has been arbitrarily grafted onto your escape. This mechanic feels really well balanced, it feels thematic and adds an additional risk and consideration that will change the decisions that you make during the game. But it's not necessarily a death sentence. You might succumb to the plague at a critical moment, especially if you go up against the plague lord himself who unsurprisingly excels at this mechanic. But in our playthroughs, it is the risk of the plague, how it changes your choices, that influences the game more than necessarily the plague itself. The plague mechanic and additional chapter cards alone are worth the price of entry, but the additional character choices of the Fletcher, Butcher and Shepherd are an unexpected treat. You'll notice from the character boards that these characters move away from the standard 4-3-1 arrangement of skills towards a 4-2-2 split, but the game achieves more than just a smoothing of odds for these characters. Instead of including same skill doubles like the characters in the core box, each of these characters has mixed double faces, i.e. results that block damage and contribute two of the three skills into combat. This necessitates a finesse of the core rules, as clarified in the expansion booklet, to confirm how these characters interact with some of the other cards in the wider game, and it makes these characters less effective at certain types of skill test, where obtaining a double of a single skill is ideal. However, this mechanic also reduces the likelihood of a character being unable to contribute anything to a fight, or that heartbreaking moment where you roll a double of a skill not present among the chapter dice. 
I think it says a lot that the first time we used these characters, we ended up sticking with them for three full playthroughs. This is more than a rearrangement of stats, they really feel like a change from the original characters. Whether they are better or worse depends entirely on what chapter cards are drawn, but they are definitely a fun twist on the core game. The deal is also sweetened with the inclusion of four beneficial new items providing great new advantages if you can find them among the item deck. The Tattered Knapsack is a particular highlight, breaking the item limit rule to increase your party options, and the three new weapons are worthy additions to the existing armoury providing just a little extra seasoning to your combat and making the item deck still feel worthwhile even with the additional risk of plague. Light of the Plague Lord is enough to make you regret that this is the final adventure pack produced for the game. There is, of course, some merit in knowing when a game is complete and ready to be brought to a conclusion, but I enjoyed folding this into our games far more than I expected. It elegantly delivers its premise with a set of well-polished additions to the game. If you're looking to expand your Escape the Dark Castle experiences, we can definitely recommend giving this one a try. I hope this short video gives you an idea what to expect from this expansion and helps you to decide whether it is worth your valuable hobby money. This is the last of our trio of videos devoted to the Escape the Dark Castle adventure packs, so check out the others in the description of this video if you want to see how this pack compares to the others. If you're interested in similar content, consider subscribing so that you don't miss our future videos. While you're at it, consider checking out our main review, if you haven't already, and The Cook's Tale our atmospheric narrative playthrough of the core game, which we hope conveys the feel of a really good game of Escape the Dark Castle. Themeborn seem to like it, so maybe you will too. Good luck recovering from your escape, fellow prisoners, and remember to always work hard, play better, and take care out there.